Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you a book. It is called Intermediate Algebra, A Clear Approach, and it was written by Norman L. Siever. So this is a book that you could use to get started with mathematics. I started mathematics at a level prior to Intermediate Algebra, and yeah, I mean, this is not too bad if you have a strong desire to learn and work really hard, um, you can learn You can learn this stuff. Copyright 1981 by Goodyear Publishing Company, Inc. Santa Monica, California. Cool. And here are the contents. I'm going to zoom in here so we can read them. Numbers and letters, products and factors. Then we have fractions, solving equations, exponents and radicals, sets, numbers and inequalities, second degree equations, graphs, systems of equations, functions and related topics. And then over here we have exponentials and logarithms. And here we have sequences and related topics. Kind of a cool book. Um, it's got some cool, cool problems. Cool topics. The layout is very different. Um, you know, it, it is it is an older book. We saw that right, 1981. So uh, very different. Um, and the modern book is not a lot of color, uh, but you can see they still make a serious effort to show all the steps. For example, we're trying to solve two x over three equals eight over seven. So they multiply both sides by twenty one. I love how they show the work. That's exactly how I do it. <laughs> so that's really great, right? So that's that's really good work, um, especially for a, for a book from 1981. It's going to give it a whiff. Ah, maybe that's why it's called a clear approach, right? They they really, 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 really try to break it down and give you really good explanations in this book. I mean, that could be that could be why. Let's check the back for answers. I love the yellow. This is a table of common logarithms. And then there's an index. And yes, there are answers uh, in the back of the book. So you do get some answers uh, in the back. Oh, what's this? Look at this, we found a card. Harrah's, Reno and Lake Tahoe. Where, where is that? I guess it's there. I guess it's, there. It's, uh, it's a card. And it just says Reno. Oh, it's the Joker. It's the Joker card. Wow. Wow. What does that mean, right? What does it mean when you find the Joker card in a math book? Is that like good luck? Is that bad luck? Um, hopefully it's good. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Interesting. There, there is a paper in here. Um, and it has some stuff on it. I'm just going to put it back in there. It was kind of hanging out. So I'm going to put it back in because it was, it was hanging out like this. So I saw it in there, I left it in there. I didn't want to mess with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put it there so it, do so it doesn't hang out. But the Joker card, that, uh, that, is, that is pretty weird. That is a weird thing to find uh, in a math book, I think. I mean, what, do you, what do you think about that? Um, do you think it's strange to find uh, a Joker card? I feel like I've lost it. Let me just get out of there. Yeah. Huh. There it is. Very, very mysterious. Anyways, you can use this book uh, for self-study. It has uh, answers to um, a lot of, of the exercises in the back of the book. What's this? Functions and related topics. So this is uh, an important subject. I like the little hand. Let's see what it says here. It says... The domain of a relation is the set of all values of the independent variable x, usually, that can be substituted into the equation and produce a real number. The range of a relation is the set of all resulting values of the dependent variable, y usually. Okay, so we have an ellipse. Cool. And so they, I guess they graph the ellipse and define the uh, domain and range. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so it's not a function, right? Because it fails the vertical line test because it hits the graph twice. And they, they show you the range, they show you the domain and the range graphically. And they do a good job of doing that. That's what's really good work on their part, right? Because think about it. Like if I was teaching your class, I would just point to it. But when you're writing a book, you don't have hands, right? I mean, they're trying to have hands, right? Look, they're doing here, he's pointing to the definition. So, um, but here what they've done is they've just made it really clear as to what what's happening there with those little flower bracket things. It's just, that's just really well done. It's just really well done. This is a nice book. I, I, I very much like this book. Um, I like the detail that they take in the examples. Like here we're graphing something very simple. Uh, y equals the absolute value of x minus one. So it says here, y is a function of x because its graph passes the vertical line test. Yep. And there are no plus or minus square roots involved. Yep. Uh, we make up a table of values as follows using the fact that absolute value always gives us a non-negative number. Okay. Yep. And then we have a V. Yeah. I remember that. I remember the moment I learned that, that the absolute value function looks like a V. It was a life-changing moment. The domain is all real x um, because any value of x can be substituted into the equation. The range is all y greater than or equal to zero because the graph never dips below the x-axis. Yeah, really nice. Good examples. Very good work. Variations. It's got a lot of mathematics. This is a, a fun book. Uh, I don't know if this book uh, is still in print or anything. I don't really know much much about it i haven't uh looked up i don't even know where i got this book um you know sometimes i i would get uh, books at like stores like thrift shops and stuff estate sales um you pick up books um i'm not even sure where i where i picked up this book yeah but it's got a lot of good practice questions and so for self-study uh it would be very good it also has a lot of examples as you can see here so i mean look it's got an example here an example here is so example two, and it's multiple parts. Example three, example four, example five, example six, and then it goes straight to the exercises. So it's straight to the point, um, no nonsense. Good way to get started with algebra. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anyways, I will look for it and try to leave a link in the description. It's a good way to get started. You know, you get a book like this and you basically sit down with it and you just try to do like, you know, at least one problem a day, try to do a little bit every day and eventually you'll get really, really good at it. So yeah, that's the way to do it. If you want to learn math, I do have courses. They're on Udemy, but if you get them, uh, use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathbits.com or from the description of any of my videos. And if you found any value in this content, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, keep doing mathematics. Oh, and this book is, I would say it's worth it. If you can get it, at like a good price. I don't know how much it is. I'll look. Um, I think it's worth it. Take care.